Hi everybody. My name is uh, Hugo Brenier. This is me on the on the corner there. Um, I'm uh, I work for a company called Point Alliance, and I'm I'm a geek. I love coding. I love SharePoint, um, and I love uh, tweeting and writing samples about it. So this is my my tweet handle and my blog. Um, I'm usually pretty active, except uh, recently because I've been on the uh, on the conference uh, cycle. Uh, I will be presenting, if anybody of you are in Toronto over the, this weekend, I will be presenting at the SharePoint Saturday in Toronto. Uh, I'm actually do doing two presentations at the exact same time. I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do that yet, but uh, that's what the schedule says. Uh, and also, for those of you who are interested in uh, contributing to, uh, to any PMP and are kind of scared about how to get started, I will be helping uh, David Warner uh, with uh, tomorrow's session on uh, sh sharing is caring. Uh, I'm sure David right now is probably sharing the link. Okay, so what I'll be talking about today is an extension that I published on the SP DevFX extensions um, called the React Command QR Code. And what it does is actually generates QR codes. And the reason why I'm doing QR codes is because in a lot of countries, uh, I, I live in Ontario, so in my province, uh, by law, organizations have to post all sorts of uh, posters and things like that. For example, uh, the uh, health and safety uh, laws actually say that we have to post uh, information about the health and safety committees, you know, the guidelines and things like that. And that's actually written in the law itself, where you have to post, you know, a piece of paper that lists all the, the members of the Joint Health and Safety Committee. So what organizations usually do is they'll actually create a you know piece of paper and they'll actually post it on the boards at the in the lunchroom and things like that. Um, and you know, two things you can notice here. First of all, you can tell that I'm Canadian by the number of please that uh, you, that appear in my my document here. Uh, but the other thing that you can notice is that, uh, and I don't know why people do this, but uh, people will actually print pieces of paper with a hyperlink on the piece of paper. Uh, as you know, I, I don't know if they are expecting people to click on the link or something like that. But the problem here is, as you can see in this URL, um, the URLs can be pretty long and they're pretty hard for people to, to remember. So how do you handle that? So what I did is I created a extension that you can add to any library, uh, any whether it's a page library or document library, which allows users to generate QR codes. And so the way it works is the user selects the QR code command. And then the first thing we look at is, is there anything selected? If there's something selected, the user selected one document or one page, uh, what we'll do is we'll generate a QR code for that selected item and we'll give it to them so that they can copy it and paste it on a document or something like that. If the user didn't select anything, then what we'll do is we'll generate a QR code for the document library itself. Because sometimes maybe what we want to do is we want to say, hey, everybody, you know, check this link for the list of policies that are available or, or things like that, or go to this site, right? So that's what I will be showing you right now. So I was planning on going directly to the code, but I guess I should probably show you what it does first. Uh, so this is an example of uh, the same document that you saw before. This is the list of committee members, um, you know, and it's available in a in a site page library, which is what you see here. It's this document right here. Um, and if you select the document, you'll notice that there's a QR code uh, extension that appears. And when I click on that extension, what it does is uh, it actually, you know, I, I stole the exact same style as the, uh, the copy link uh, behavior. Um, but what it does, is it generates a QR code for this document. It copies it into the, the clipboard and then it allows users to either uh, copy again in case, uh, in case they want to copy it again, or they can download the document. So what I'll do here is I'll just download it. It's called QR code uh, 17. Uh, and then to show that I'm not lying about this, I found this really cool website 
uh, by uh, Laz Lazar Laszlo that actually allows you to uh, choose a QR code and then read uh, the URL for it. So if I click on my downloads here and I pick the QR code that I just downloaded, uh, what you should see is it gives me a link to the same page that we were showing before. So I'm not cheating. Uh, if I don't select anything, you can see that I still have a QR code that appears here, and that QR code is actually pointing to the document library. So if I wanted to send people to this. And this applies to also uh, document, uh, you know, not just pages. Uh, and the thing that I should point out is I also uh, did it so that those uh, QR codes uh, or that extension will appear on the context as well. So you can do that. All right, so let's talk about how I did this. All right, so what I did here is uh, I created a, uh, an extension. And the extension is actually pretty simple. Uh, what it does is it uh, when there's only one command in my extension. And when the command gets uh, called, I get the page context because I'm going to be using the page context uh, for, for generating some, some information. I also get the URL of the site uh, and I generate the relative URL of the site because I'm going to need to do this to rebuild the URLs here. Uh, and I also get the root of the URL. Uh, but then what I do is I actually look at if the number of selected rows is uh, is greater than zero. Um, you know, do this here, which is get the relative URL of the document that's been selected, get the file name of the document that's been selected, because I'll actually need to be displaying the file name, uh, and I'll also want to uh, use that so I can uh, use a, a disposition later and then build an absolute URL. Now, I'm not necessarily proud of this code here. I'm just kind of aggregating the thing. I should probably use a better approach, but I wanted to keep the code as simple as possible. Uh, if um, there's nothing selected here, um, in fact, this code would probably handle if more than one items are selected, but um, you know what I do is I just get the relative URL uh, for the list, and I just generate the URL for the list. The cool part here is this here, where I generate a new dialogue uh, object, and I pass it the file name, the absolute URL, and then I call show. So why am I using a dialogue? Why am I not using a pane? Is because I want that behavior that will pop over the whole screen, and I want to be able to dismiss that dialogue by clicking away from it. Again, I stole the exact same behavior as the, the copy, uh, copy link uh, behavior in the uh, SharePoint library, which is right here. I wanted this exact same behavior, right? So when I do this here, I want it, I want it to be a dismissible dialog like this. So how do you get dismissible dialogs? Uh, I generated, or I sorry, I created a class called QR Dialog, and what it does is it extends the out of the box base dialog. And the cool thing about the base dialog is that uh, it does it does a couple things. One is that uh, it has a get config method, which will actually uh, look at the configuration that needs to be passed to the dialog. So in this case, I'm saying I don't want it to be blocking. I want to allow people to click away from the dialog. Uh, here you go. One second. I think we might have lost your audio. All right. Someone muted me. Okay. So uh, I just generate the, uh, I pass the information I'm going to need, and I actually pass uh, a, a relative uh, or a reference to the parent element because I want to be able to bind uh, by, by position when I generate the dialog. And then the dialog content here, what it actually does, if I go all the way up and scroll, sorry for the scrolling here, it's actually a very simple uh, dialog. So I, I use the, the callout method, uh, and I just generate my buttons uh, for closing. Uh, and I use an extension called uh, a React, uh, React component called QR Canvas that actually generates a Canvas object, 
with uh, whatever URL that you want. And then I have my uh, my button here for copying, which calls copy, uh, and my button for downloading. When I click on uh, download, which is a little bit further, actually, let's start on copy. When I click on copy, what I actually do is I create really quickly a, um, an, a div element, and I actually insert an image element where I copy the URL uh, to the uh, QR code. And then I actually select the image from that HTML element, and I copy it using the clipboard uh, method of the browser. And then I just hide everything. And if I if I actually delete, I just actually generate a, uh, a download URL for this. So this is like a super quick um, review uh, of uh, what we were trying to do. But again, uh, what happens if you if you use this is you can now you know create your your posters in the office, and you can actually just generate QR codes. Uh, by either downloading the QR code like I showed you or copy and pasting the QR codes. Again, my name is Hugo. If you have any questions, uh, please don't hesitate to uh, tweet me. I'm usually pretty good at responding. And please visit my blog. I will actually be writing a blog post about this whole thing. That's it for me. Back to you, Patrick. Awesome. Thank you very much. Really cool thing there to see a QR code getting generated. Um, I think there are a lot of applications for that, so it's going to be a great sample for people to check out. Mm -hmm.